Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Tony, and after a few weeks without an update, I thought today would be a good time to do a recap at what has been going on in the jailbreak community. So yesterday, Apple held an event geared towards teachers and students, and at this event, they unveiled a refresh to the cheaper $329 iPad. Now surprisingly, today, Apple publicly released iOS 11.3, but only for this brand new device. Now this iPad is on sale right now, but it is not in Apple stores quite yet. In fact, it won't arrive for customers who bought this until early next week. So right off the bat in this video, I wanted to discuss the timeline of when iOS 11.3 may be coming out for the rest of us. Now we didn't hear anything in regards to iOS 11.3 or Apple's AirPower wireless charging map for that matter at yesterday's conference. Those are two of the biggest things on everyone's mind right now. But that being said, with Apple publicly releasing iOS 11.3 to the new iPad today, it's very likely that iOS 11.3 is right around the corner from being released for everyone and for every device. Now, it would be very possible for iOS 11.3 to drop as early as tomorrow, but I am more so anticipating it to come out early next week, either Monday or Tuesday. And I gathered this information by taking a look at when the new iPad orders would arrive to customers on Apple's site. It says either Tuesday or Wednesday, aka early next week. So with that being the case, I wanted to take today to update everyone on the status of an iOS 11.3 jailbreak and advise viewers on whether they should or should not update to it. And the quick version is no, absolutely not, if you intend a jailbreak, that is. There are really no exploits out there at this current point in time. Sure, there are a few vulnerabilities, but there's nothing substantial to make me think that an iOS 11.3 jailbreak is even remotely close to coming out. Now, iOS 11.2 to 11.2.2 users are in a slightly better place. They have had a few more vulnerabilities be released that are a little bit more powerful. I could very easily see something like Torngat or Houdini be released for those firmwares, but still they are missing a crucial part to a new jailbreak, and that is a kernel level exploit. As many know, the iOS 11 to 11.1.2 jailbreak was pretty much possible solely due to Ian Beer's async wake exploit. But even then, so that was discovered and released three to four months before a jailbreak was put together and released that could run Cydia. Granted, in my mind, a jailbreak simply provides us root access to the file system with the ability to modify it on the fly. So declaring a device as jailbroken does not necessarily depend if Cydia is able to run on it in any way. But with that being said, even at this point in time, Cydia still runs on an alternative version of Substrate called Substitute. Granted, this version of Cydia works very well in my opinion, considering it was created independently by a third party with no input from Sorik. But still, the fact remains, we have yet to see a final release of Cydia for iOS 11 to 11.1.2. And this firmware has a kernel level exploit available, and it's been available for six months or so now. I mean, Coolstar himself has released over 11 beta updates for his jailbreak before a version came out that could run Cydia. And to accomplish this task, most of Cydia and its dependencies had to be manually modified for it to run properly. And that, my friends, is no easy task to do. Furthermore, Coolstar has mentioned multiple times that his Electra jailbreak would be one of the last he would publicly work on due to the amount of backlash he received from the community. Anyway, that is my rant on new kernel level exploits for firmwares, but as a recap, an iOS 11.3 jailbreak is not looking very likely at this point in time because the exploits are just not available for it. And at this point in time, even if a kernel level exploit were to be released for it today, I'm really not sure who would work on it and turn it into a jailbreak and accomplish all of this before iOS 12 hits its beta stages. Because at that point in time, no one is going to care about an iOS 11.3 jailbreak. They are just going to want a zero day iOS 12 jailbreak. Furthermore, as of yesterday's conference, Apple announced that a new app that they're working on is called Schoolwork that's coming to iOS. Now, further investigating this app on Apple's websites, it's noted several times that it will be introduced on iOS 11.4. So that is something new on the table that iOS 11.4 is a real thing and that it will be coming sometime this summer before iOS 12 is rolled out. Now, very briefly, I wanted to further clarify the status of an iOS 11.2 to 11.2.2 jailbreak. If you guys remember, in one of my latest jailbreak update videos, I talked about the 11.2 exploit by Zimperium. In that video, I mentioned that a proof of concept project had been released, but I wasn't quite sure what could be achieved with this exploit. Now, a few weeks later, a little bit more information has surfaced and some progress has been made. This turned out to only be a sandbox exploit for iOS 11.2 to 11.2.2. So this is some good news and some bad news. 
The good news is some progress has been made, but unfortunately this is not all we need for an iOS 11.2 jailbreak. Like I said earlier, we are going to need a full kernel level exploit before a fully fledged jailbreak could be accomplished. But on the flip side, in the meantime with this exploit, something like Houdini or Torngat could be achieved that lets us modify the icon masks, badges, change the dock, the look of the control center, disable auto updates, add custom boot logos, etc. Furthermore, security researchers could use this to dig around for more vulnerabilities in 11.2. All right, and so onto a topic I don't bring up too often. What about iOS 10 users? Now, very briefly, there have been some major releases since I talked about iOS 10. The Double Helix 64-bit jailbreak has been released for all iterations of iOS 10 and for all devices aside from the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus models. Now, those users will have to wait for the KPP-less jailbreak called Meridian to be finished, and it looks like some progress has been made there too. Now the developer of that jailbreak, it looks like he's working on an alternative to Substrate for his jailbreak as well to bring Cydia to it the same way that Coolstar did for his iOS 11 Electra jailbreak. Anyway, for everyone else on iOS 10, the Double Helix jailbreak is very impressive. I can now officially say that the iPhone 5 and 5C are now jailbroken for life. But more importantly, this is by far the most stable jailbreak for iOS 10, even more so than the Yalu jailbreak, the Saigon jailbreak, or the Goblin jailbreak. Plus, its support massively outranks all the other jailbreak utilities. So in the end, if you guys want to jailbreak iOS 10, the question is no longer can we, but why not? Alright, so very quickly I want to talk about SCP on iOS. So for those of you who don't know, there is a way to upgrade to an unsigned version of iOS, and that is with the tool called Future Restore. Now before you use this, you will need a jailbroken device that has its SHSH blobs saved for the newer version of iOS, and you must take into account that the SCP or the Secure Enclave processor and its baseband are still compatible with said newer version. But if all goes right, this process will effectively make the jailbreak transition seamless, and you will never lose your jailbreak. Now I bring this up because with the release of iOS 11.3, Apple has made changes to the SCP making it incompatible with older jailbreakable versions of iOS 11. Thus if you plan to use Future Store to update say your iOS 10 jailbroken device to iOS 11 to 11.1.2, I would attempt this process now as once iOS 11.2.6 is no longer being signed, your window to upgrade will be closed. Now very lastly, I wanted to touch upon something that may or may not come out. As of last week, there has been a major vulnerability discovered when someone asked Siri to read your recent notifications. Now, this becomes a problem when you use third-party messages apps like WhatsApp or something like that. When you go ahead and ask Siri to read your latest message, even with your device lock, Siri will go ahead and read that last message. Now, this is a huge security vulnerability that Apple has recognized, and they have patched it in iOS 11.3, but when it was first discovered last week, Apple made note that they might be releasing a patch update, something like iOS 11.2.7, before iOS 11.3 is released. Now, considering iOS 11.3 is probably going to be released sometime early next week, this update isn't looking very likely that it's going to come out at this point, but I just want to let you guys know that iOS 11.2.7 may or may not be coming out within the next couple of days. Anyway, that is a brief overview of all the iOS releases and updates within the jailbreaking community that have happened thus far in the last couple of weeks. There has been a lot of little things that all kind of add up to a big update, and so that is why I wanted to take today's video just to go over everything that has come out. So with all that being said, we are still waiting on an update from Sorik on his iOS 11 jailbreak. The last thing we heard regarding this is he is working with an undisclosed developer on creating his own jailbreak for iOS 11 that will now compete with the Electra jailbreak. So it will be very interesting to see now at this point if this jailbreak utility is ever publicly released. And to see what firmwares are supported considering not many people are still running iOS 11.1.2 that are looking to jailbreak. Most of my viewers are now wondering if an iOS 11.2 or newer jailbreak is going to come out. So lastly, in other news, a major event is coming up that you guys may want to put on your calendar. ZeroCon 2018, a conference for exploit developers and bug hunters, will be held on March 29th and 30th, so starting tomorrow. Now I bring this up because there are some major jailbreak developers and security research teams speaking at this conference, including Pangu, Jonathan Levin, and Saiguza. So stay tuned for coverage on this, and hopefully we will see something released in the next few days. Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's video on iOS 11.3 and further jailbreak related information. If you guys intend to jailbreak, I would not recommend updating to the software. Again, you have better chances of jailbreaking the lower iOS version you are running. 
And as a recap, iOS 11 to 11.1.2 now has the Electro Jailbreak with Cydia. 11.2 to 11.2.2 has a few vulnerabilities released for it, but it's lacking a kernel level exploit for a full fledged jailbreak to be possible. iOS 11.2.5 and above, including 11.3, have yet to receive any substantial vulnerability or exploits, making them the most unlikely iOS iterations to receive a jailbreak in the near future. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this quick video, and if you did, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. And if you want to stay updated on new iOS releases, top tweaks, and the latest jailbreaking news, don't forget to subscribe before you head out. But until next time, guys, this is Tony, signing out.